in a world where everyone says hello, they dare to say, yeah, good day. 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 Yes. Good day. Yeah. Good day. Good day. Yeah, good day. Yeah, good day. Yeah, good day. Hey, yeah, good day. Yeah, good day, Tim. Yep. Good day, Leon. Yeah, good day, everyone. Yeah, good day, everyone. Welcome to Yeah, good day, episode three, the complete guide to Australia. Whether you're across the water or within the border, we have facts and funnies for you, Tim. We've got at least some facts. The funnies are <laughs> are a negotiable part of the deal. <laughs> sometimes we bring them, sometimes we don't. You got to really take a risk and listen to the episode. Tim, uh, so far we've covered Vegemite and we've covered Platypode. We did. Uh, in separate episodes, of course. Yeah, they we didn't cover the Platypuses in platypi, Vegemite. Yeah. Although, um, and you know what? I think that every week we're challenging ourselves to be better and better and we're trying to find better and better things about Australia, which isn't hard, oh, mind you. There's a long list. The only hard thing about this is me. Um, <laughs> and I would say... It's true. I can see it from here. I would say, Tim, that... The one struggle that we always have is trying to find something that's enjoyable, mm. uh, that's always enjoyable and is enjoyable across a vast array of things. It's enjoyable every time of the day, breakfast, lunch, tea. We're always trying to find enjoyable things. Yeah, sure. But Tim, I think I've found another thing about Australia that is this good. Uh, that good. Crikey, Tim, I think I've found it. Crikey, let's hear Crikey about it then. Indeed. What is it Tim, then, mate? this week we're going to talk about Steve Irwin. Steve Irwin. The Crocodile Hunter. One of Australia's greatest human beings. He uh, was I specify that amazing. he's a human being because he did a lot of work with animals of different uh, species. Yes. Australian animals. And yes. um, we did cover an Australian animal last week. So I thought, mm. no, we need to need to be clear. Steve was a human mm. uh, living on the continent slash country that is Australia. He was. He was indeed, <laughs> Tim. Um, but... I know this is actually getting quite silly. Um, I'm getting... Mm. I, I know the listeners are probably getting over it. I'm getting over it. Is that every week we get to these things and we think of a topic and for the life of me, Tim, mm. I just don't know... En- I grew up with Steve mm. and I just don't know anything about him. Well, would you like me to give you a hard science, real historic, uh, scholarly rundown of his life? That would be good, but I feel like that is missing kind of, I guess, some anecdotes and some other things about his life. Well, I mean, structurally, it would be probably pleasing to an audience who might be listening to this if I deliver some facts, and then perhaps you had some anecdotes to share. And that's funny, because as I said, I don't know anything about him, but I know a lot of anecdotes about him. It's very interesting. uh, Tim, I think, once again, it's a match made in heaven for us to talk about Steve Irwin. And this has been really a delightfully meta Line of joke. Um, I'm hopefully, laughing. Um, hopefully, people haven't tuned out at this point. No, for real though, I do have some, uh, you know the the facts about our good our good man Steve. Um, bless him, miss him every day. I uh, will get to that yeah, part we though. Do, yeah. Um, look. Uh, okay. Here you, we go. You ready for me to? I am strapped in. Give you the lowdown. All right. So Steve Irwin, full name Stephen Robert Irwin. Mm. He was born on the 22nd of February 1962 in Essendon. Down here in uh, in the Melbourne vicinity, oh, Victoria. There you go. Yeah, his mum and dad, Bob and Lynn Irwin, mm. delightfully Australian names. Um, they moved to Queensland in 1970 around the Caloundra area. Nobody's going to know where I'm talking about. Yes, Caloundra. Um, if you know where Australia Zoo is, which we'll talk about later, that is the area. Mm. Um, so he, they moved up there, and when they got there, um, Bob and Lynn. Steve's parents, as I've already mentioned, started a small, the uh, small Queensland reptile and fauna park. Coincidence? Fauna means animals. <laughs> and reptile <laughs> means a reptile. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> exactly. Um, so, yeah, obviously uh, his, his father was interested in, uh, I think it's herp- herptology. I can't remember how you pronounce the word. Basically, mm. it's amphibians and reptiles. And his mother was uh, a wildlife rescue and rehabilitator mm. so steve grew up around that sort of stuff his entire life they ran the park um and he was obviously involved in the park itself so they moved up there in eight when he was eight um on his sixth birthday he, he spent a lot of time around dangerous animals growing up so on his sixth birthday he was giving a 12 foot scrub python that's four meters for those using um 
the proper. What's the? It's not the proper. It's not it our metric system is Met, better. Metric. No, um, four meters is metric. Oh wait, sorry. Yeah, yeah metric. Um, wait. What did you, did you say? His twelfth birthday? No, his sixth birthday. His sixth birthday. Twelve foot python. Sixth birthday. Not a six foot python. His twelfth birthday. I'd hate Although, to see what he got on his twelfth birthday. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, he, so he got that on his sixth birthday. Yep. By the time he was nine, um, after his dad had, had talked to him about you know reptiles and stuff, mm. he began uh, working with crocodiles. So I think uh, I have it written here. Yes. He wrestled his first crocodile at nine. Lucky I wrote it directly <sighs> after the fact about him being nine. Yeah. So he was he was nine years old. And what Australian? You know, person didn't wrestle their first crocodile at nine years old. That's the real question. I think here. I was eight and a half, but I was an early bloomer. Yeah, so. well, yeah. We all yeah. got to wrestle a crocodile at some point. <laughs> yeah, no, that's absolutely. seriously insane. Yeah, it's insane. It's insane. So over that uh, over that time period when he was growing up, it's estimated he helped uh, Bob and Lynn capture and, and treat and look after about 100 crocodiles over that time. Amazing. So obviously they had that park going. And in 1991, mm. uh, which he was, I don't even know, how old he would have been at that point. Yep. Um, he took over management of the park and he called it Australia Zoo. Amazing. Which is a zoo I've been to a couple of times. Have you been to one? I actually haven't been. I, and I, I think next time that I make it up north, I will definitely be going. It is a very good zoo um, as far as zoos go, mm. whether you agree with the ethic, ethical nature of zoos or zoos, not. It's yeah. a, whole other, a whole other discussion. Mm. But uh, yeah, very, very good. Very well done. And they're yeah, really committed to con- conservation, which we'll talk about as well, yes. um, what else have I got here? So he met his wife Terry in 1991 as well. Yes. So Terry, I don't know her last name. Terry Rains. Terry sorry. Rains. Later, Irwin. Yep. Uh, she was an American naturalist from Eugene, Oregon. Yeah. Shout so out to she her was American naturally friends. American, is what you're saying. She was naturally American. Yes. <laughs> sorry. <yeah>. Continue. <laughs> Absolutely. <off. laughs> um, so she came over and was visiting wildlife rehabilitation facilities in Australia. Mm. She obviously went to uh, the Australia one that, that Steve ran with his parents mm. there um, and met there. And they said it was love at first sight. Love at first sight of a man in short shorts and khaki. Oh, I remember the first time I saw him. I was bone hard as well. So, <laughs> <God>. <laughs> Nothing Just, is sacred on this show. No, absolutely not. Um, so obviously, yeah, that, they... Married, uh, like they were engaged like four months later, got married not long after that. Um, mm. And they had two kids. They, they had did. Uh, Bindi. Yes. And Robert. Yes. Bob. Which is, you know, his dad's name and Steve's middle name. The, that is correct. The Robert Bob yeah. line has so, been continued. Uh, yeah. And, and both of them have kind of been on television pretty recently as well. Bindi grew up on TV, so we saw her quite a bit. Yeah. Um, and Bob's Bindi... been on TV pretty recently. Bindi ended up with her own show as well. She had, uh, it was like Bindi's Wildlife, you know, one of those shows. She ended up with like, I guess, a kid's version of um, Steve's Bindi the Jungle Girl, I think. Yeah, that's what it was. Um, But she was also quite recently on uh, Dancing with the Stars, now as a uh, a young lady. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. Um, And she was really good. Yeah, she's like, and she's like America's sweetheart. Everyone loves her because she's just a nice girl. She's like, you know, she's just a good, good Australian citizen um, (laughs) who can dance. Yeah. Um, but the did you uh, in your studies see the fact about where Bindi's name comes from? Uh, it's named after a crocodile. Yes. One of Steve's favorite favorite yeah, it crocodiles. Was a crocodile, I think it was. And then her middle name is Sue, which is named after the dog Suey. I don't know who Suey is, but I think it's Suey. It's S U I. Come on, Suey, the dog. That was the dog that Steve took everywhere with him. It was his companion. I dog. honestly don't remember that, but cool. Yeah. Cool, cool. Anyway, cool, please cool. no. Go on with your facts. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so anyway, that's kind of his his family life. That's the lowdown on where he comes from, where he was. Yep. Uh, who who Steve was. Mm. Um, obviously, he's most known, and we'll talk more about his other his other credits, but mm. for Croc Hunter. So Crocodile Hunter was a, a television show that ran in Australia. Um, started in 1996, was exported internationally in 1997, and become mm. wildly became wildly, wildly. popular. Mm. Yes, wildly. Yes, um, and ran until 2006. And um, if anyone's ever seen the show, Steve was uh, incredibly passionate, enthusiastic, enthusiastic. He copped quite a bit of of flack and uh and people made fun of him because of his enthusiasm but that was actually kind of part of his charm and appeal i found and i yeah. think the rest of the world found as well was he was so excited um to do some crazy things with animals yeah. and to teach people about them um 
and yeah, that's that's how the show really took off. And he, uh, he was almost like a, uh, a a punk rock version of David Attenborough. Um, yeah, he went out into the wild and did the same stuff. Showed the world what they, what was there and made people uh, not like you know made people not afraid of scary animals, but showed people that there was another side to the animals. Talked yeah. about the importance of the animals, but he did it like and he got out there and he was wrestling them to show you them. He was catching snakes. He was. Getting bitten, he was getting spit at with venom. Like, you know, yeah. All... Speaking of David Attenborough, actually, not long after he passed away, Terry, his wife, uh, was invited to. There was an award presentation or some kind of induction for David Attenborough, right. recognizing his work. Um, and she mentioned that David Attenborough obviously was a huge uh, yeah. inspiration to Steve. Inspiration, and he was he was he really loved it. And David Attenborough actually. In his speech of accepting his award, his award acknowledged uh, Steve as well, and, and mentioned that he was uh, he'd done great things for conservation around the world. So that's, that's pretty, pretty amazing. Cool. Yeah, it's a real it's testament. Awesome. Um, so yeah, he was he's a major conservationist. He started. I got a list. He started like a million foundations. Yep. Um, the Steve Irwin Conservation Foundation, which is actually now known as Wildlife Warriors. Wildlife Warriors. Yep. Um, helped. He helped found the International Crocodile Rescue. Lynn Owen Memorial Fund, which was named after his mother, yep. um, and the Ironbark Station Wildlife Rehabilitation Facility. Amazing. Yeah. So that was his life. He was on television, and we'll talk about some of the other TV stuff he did, yep. and he did a bunch of um, advertisements in Australia and stuff, mostly, I, th- I think there was one about um, customs. and he yep. was, Basically, everything he did always had that conservation focus. Yeah. He was very dedicated to, um, to making sure... That Australia wildlife was preserved um, in its in its best form, and uh, he did the same thing overseas. Yep. But um, on September the fourth, two thousand and six, mm. Steve um, was at Bat Reef, which is near Port Douglas, way up, way way up north in uh, Queensland, doing. Um, they were filming a documentary, which was ironically called "Ocean's Deadliest." Mm. Um, and they were filming kind of in the shallows somewhere. And um, he saw a stingray, followed it, thinking it'd be great to get some footage of mm. the stingray getting away. Sadly, the stingray did not like what he did, turned around and uh, stabbed him with the barb that they have. Mm. Apparently, it was pretty brutal. And there is footage, but the footage has been it's destroyed. Been all, it's been all yeah. destroyed, yeah. It's been destroyed. It was given to Terry and the family and they destroyed it. Nobody's seen it, which is good because yep. who wants to see that? But yeah, he um, didn't die on the scene. They thought it was only a lung puncture, but later they took him to hospital. I think he died once he got there, yeah. Yeah, they found that it had pierced his heart. Yeah, very, very sad. And it was it was actually the outpouring in Australia and all over the world, I guess, was kind of extraordinary. I can still remember... Do you remember the day? Yeah, I I don't remember the day him dying. Mm. The day I remember is, um, <clears throat> I mean, I remember on the news that there was John Howard talked about it. A bunch of people yeah. came out and talked about how um, John Howard, being the prime minister at the time, for those mm. who aren't aware, um, talked about how sad it was and you know what what a great man he was. Um, but then on September twentieth, obviously they had the. Um, What's the word? Memorial. Yep, the so public memorial, yeah. At the Australia Zoo, there's the Crocosseum, which is this big 5,500-seater venue where they do these crocodile shows um, educating on crocodiles and they hold the meat above the pool and the croc jumps out. It's actually yep. really cool to watch. Um, if you get up there, you should definitely give it a watch. But um, they did a service there and um, so I think uh, the Prime Minister, John Howard, uh, spoke. His dad, Bob, and his daughter, Bindi, spoke. Bindi was, it was so sad. Mm. Um, just so well composed from what yeah, I remember though absolutely so, and a couple of other people talked um, Anthony from the Wiggles mm. who we'll one day talk about or Wiggles Australia's greatest export oh. uh, <laughs> um, and the saddest part and I remember actually crying watching this on the television because yes. it was broadcast on television all around Australia yep. um, was John Williamson a very famous and respected uh, country musician here in Australia yep. saying True Blue which is uh, just a fundamentally Australian song. Um, and a beautifully Australian song. Beautiful, beautiful song as well. And he sang that while uh, Steve's best mate packed up his truck and um, drove it out of the stadium. And I'm getting prickles up my neck talking about it. Because as am it was, I. It, was, it was just so 
it was a really moving kind of tribute to uh to, to Steve and everything he'd done and yeah. Yeah, it was like uh it was almost like I guess if it was in reverse and I and John Williamson was writing the song, I guess after Steve had become the thing, it's like it feels like he was the perfect person mm. for that song and that song was like written about him because Absolutely, it was, yeah. yeah. It's a great song. Um, I also feel emotional. Um, Tim and I regularly talk about because when because Tim and I, you know, were singing around the house, and we regularly were just randomly singing "True Blue" or "I Know I Am" sometimes. Mm. Um, and every time, we always automatically link it back to that memorial, and we always oh, go, yeah. "Do you remember how sad it was and how good it was?" I, it will. F- that song will forever be linked to to the Steve Irwin memorial. Yeah. When I went, uh, actually, I ended up going to Australia Zoo probably with my family maybe a year a year after he passed away right and um it was really touching as well because they still had they drove and he drove the truck out of the crocosium and they kind of parked it there yeah um so you can actually still see the truck and then they had everyone that attended they had these kind of uh things that you could ride on right and some of the messages people had written with yeah that was really touching as well and that's still there i think it's still there yeah i yeah, think well. it's somewhere in the park yeah i was gonna say like in terms of the the Day, I guess it was the day after, but I still remember being in the car and hearing the news on the radio. Like, yeah, that's, I like, I like that's my vivid memory when everyone talks about Steve Owen and his passing, and that it's always, oh, I remember being in the car on the way to school. It's like, two, what was it, 2007, 2006, 2007, 2006? When he passed, yeah, uh, 2006, yeah, so, 2006, so 2006. I was in year eight or something, so you know, I'm, yeah, um, and yeah, I, I very much remember being in the car with mum and her. anyway, anyway, that's the sad stuff, but it uh, is. let's talk about Steve as uh. As the man he was, he was incredibly enthusiastic. He yes. had his catchphrase crikey and his crikey. catchphrase, his car key shorts, which were always dangerously yeah. close to, <laughs> to, to showing yeah. a nut, I'm sure. Yeah. Um, no, he, he, and, and his, his blonde mullet and everything, he had beautiful blonde hair. Oh, yeah. His, uh, luscious, luscious yeah. hair. So... Let's, uh, as you say, let's we'll move on. Like you know, that, that is the that is his life. You got to tell the whole story and the whole picture. Yeah. Um. And yeah, they they're all carrying on. Um. The zoo and as I said, Bindi and and Bob. Yeah, as well. You were saying Bob's going to appear on TV. I think he's also getting a pretty like you know social media famous as well. Like yeah. Um. They're very much their father and their mother's children in terms of their their nature and what they do for nature. Definitely. Definitely. Um, but Steve, as you said, like he. Um, with Crocodile Hunter, I don't know if you saw this in your facts. The funny thing about, or the interesting thing about Crocodile Hunter is that instead of going on a honeymoon, uh, him and Terry went out to kind of make a documentary. Right. And that documentary ended up being kind of, I guess, the pilot that they sold the idea of Crocodile Hunter and they started oh, really? making the series. Yeah, so their honeymoon <laughs> was making a documentary about... about um, That's pretty cool. Major. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so... But he appeared everywhere in America. Like that was the the, the big thing about Steve Owen was he wasn't just big in Australia. He was huge oh, in yeah. America he, and huge overseas. huge overseas. Because you know, I think most people looked at him and went, "What is this guy doing?" Because he's jumping on the back of crocodiles. And as I said I, another memory because we used to watch him. I think it was most weekend mornings we'd watch him on Animal Planet, the like the yep. Foxtel channel. Yep. Um, and I remember him getting spat. Uh, I think by it, a cobra. Yeah, I, think was, it, yeah, I, I remember, remember that. Even the eyes or just in the face of that. But like, it's super toxic. But, like, obviously, you know, he yeah. had the right stuff to to cure him. But like, he, it wasn't fake or made up. Like, he went out there and like, yeah, they were those animals were real and they they knew that they could do stuff. Yeah, you can. I can just uh, always have burned into my mind like just the images of him. He'd always grab the snake by the tail. Yeah, he'd just be out in the middle of nowhere and just yeah. find a wild snake, pick it up so you you could see it in front of the camera, and yeah. then also him and his team would relocate crocs and it was <laughs> it yeah was hectic stuff to watch and that's probably an important thing you've said there with the relocation is that i think a lot of people probably watch his stuff and i know that times i've seen his stuff and you look at it and you go oh is that right should he do that in the wild um but like you know as i said number one he's always handling them appropriately and properly and he's never hurting them oh definitely and he's showing you about them but also like in terms of his zoo you know zoo is sometimes not a good word in general because zoos like his are more i think conservationy and rehabilitationy mm. so they're kind of you know that they're, they're it's helping animals but yeah he was always saving animals and if there was an animal supposedly there's a story that when he was a kid growing up you know if he would always be late to school a lot of the times he'd be telling his mum to stop so he could help a lizard off the side of the road and stuff yeah, like that. yeah right um, but anyway, so he appeared on shows like Jay Leno all the time. Like, and yeah. I remember seeing him on those kind of talk shows where he'd appear and uh, take some kind of wildlife and, you know, bring a crocodile into the, the studio. And that would always blow people's minds. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. In 2001, uh, he appeared in a cameo role in Dr. Doolittle 2, which I don't remember. Oh, it's the best of the Dr. Doolittle <laughs> series, <laughs> but, of which there are three, I think. Maybe. Yeah. 
But supposedly the storyline is there's an alligator who warns Doolittle that he knows Erwin is going to grab him yeah. <laughs> and is prepared to attack when he does. But Dr. Doolittle fails to warn Steve Irwin in time. So I assume Steve Irwin gets bitten by an alligator in that movie. Yeah. Um, let alone did he appear in other people's films. In 2002, The Crocodile Hunter Collision Course um, was released. Oh. It was... Uh, supposedly the storyline was that uh, Steve Irwin mistakes... Uh, some CIA agents for poachers and he's trying to stop them from capturing a crocodile which, unknown to him, has swallowed a tracking transmitter. What a wonderful premise for a movie and let me tell you, that movie does not hold up. No. It's However, good, but it, it did fun. win the Best Family Feature Film Award for Comedy Film at the Young Artist Awards. Ah, fantastic. An um, award I have never yeah. heard of. The film was produced <laughs> on a budget of about $12 million US and it's Whoa. grossed $33 million. Ah, well, it, was, um, it was successful, so good on them. Yeah, to promote the film, uh, Owen was featured in an animated short produced by Animax Entertainment for Intermix. Fabulous. Um, yes, you know, I'm just reading stuff on Wikipedia, so sometimes I don't check what I'm reading before I get to the end of it, because that was a boring sentence. Um, Fantastic. In 2002, mm. with our powers combined of the greatest Australian greats together, Steve Owen and his family appeared in the Wiggles Wiggly Safari. Oh, and that does hold up. <laughs> that definitely holds <laughs> that up. That definitely holds um, up. Set in, the, in, a, in Australia Zoo itself, and it featured singing and dancing inspired by Australian wildlife. So that's another great thing. And again, considering the large nature of export when it comes to the Wiggles, um, I just moved my hand around the room <laughs> to show the vastness. It's incredibly vast. Um, Let me tell you, from that hand gesture, <laughs> you cannot underestimate um, it's, the vastness. Uh, again, it's, it's, so, it's so good for Australia. Um Steve was also part of an advertising campaign for the Garn. For those of you listening that don't know about the Garn, the Garn is a, a passenger train that operates between Mel- um, Adelaide and, and Alice Springs and Darwin. So it's like a great cross Australia train. Yeah, it kind of goes um, right down the middle. <laughs> yeah, I'd love to go on it sometime. Um, and because of that campaign, there was a Pacific National NR class locomotive um, named Steve Irwin as part of the campaign, which is wonderful. What a thing to what have. What train are you catching? Catching the 12 o'clock Steve Irwin. See you later. Yeah, fantastic. Um, in 2005, again, another big thing happened. Um, he provided his voice for the 2006 animated film, Happy Feet. Um, he was the elephant seal named Trev. What a great film. I was um, actually looking at the his like credits of everything that he's been in. Yeah. And it's always it's as himself, as himself, as himself, as himself. Like just all down the page and just one. Trev, Trev. Yeah. <laughs> which is somehow so Australian. Yeah. Now, as you notice, I said that in 2005, he did that for a 2006 film. So the film was actually released after he'd passed away. So they dedicated the yeah. film to him. Um, and supposedly there's a, uh, an incomplete scene. I don't know if I've actually seen this featuring him doing the voice of an albatross where he essentially plays himself, which in my head, what I'm envisaging is quite funny, an albatross being Steve Irwin. I would love to see um, that. It was restored for DVD release. So again, we'll, we'll try and find that clip this week and um, get that out to yes, everyone. Yes, definitely. Um, uh, do you know, again, just running through in, in terms of awards and accolades and stuff, in 2002, um, Australia Zoo was voted Queensland's top tourist attraction, um, which is awesome. Like, it's great that it was his zoo that has that. Definitely. Um, and again, you know, the United States bringing people over here as a tourist destination. Back in terms of him being a great guy, in November 2003, um, so he was filming this documentary um, on sea lions off the coast of Baja or Baja, California Peninsula in Mexico. Um, it's B-A-J-A. Baja? Baja, maybe. Um, I think my Spanish is pretty, pretty good. ordinary. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, and they heard on their boat's radio that these two scuba dives had gone missing. So they, they completely halted filming Mm. Um, to help it in the search. So they went on the search and... Oh, wow, okay. Uh, yeah, I think one of the kayakers from Steve's team actually found, um, well, it turns out the only living um, you know, survivor of this kind of accident or whatever happened there. Um, and they brought them back to Steve's boat and, that, and the guy didn't even recognize Steve Owen. So, like, you know, I think it's, like, again, a testament to his Australian nature and his own nature. Yeah, just, absolutely. Let's just Dropped everything to, to make sure that uh, everyone was okay. Um, in 1997... Uh, while on a fishing trip in Queensland with his dad, they found a new species of turtle. Ooh. This turtle, was, uh, was he was given the, the honour of naming the turtle, um, and this turtle is known as Irwin's turtle, which he named after his family, not himself. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. The scientific name is Elsea Irwini. 
a whinny. Yes. Now, that might sound good, but there's one other animal that Steve has had the pleasure of naming. Right. And the name is the best name of any animal of all time. Okay. So, Steve found a species of air-breathing land snail. Okay. Soak that in for a second, first of all. Right. Now, you've got Irwin's turtle, El Elsia Irwinny. Um, the snail is actually called Crikey Steve Irwinny. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> I really, love really I love great it. scientific stuff. I'm going to try and find a picture of that guy. Um, again, just quick rattle off of awards. You know, I know I'm going quickly, but there's a lot to cover when it comes to oh, the stuff that so he much. did. Um, but a couple of quick awards as well. He was awarded the Centenary Medal by the Australian government in 2001 for his service service to global conservation and to Australian tourism. Yeah. Uh, in 2004, he was recognised as Tourism Export of the Year. Uh, he was nominated in 2004 for Australia of the Year. However, didn't win that year because cricket captain Steve Waugh won, which, you know, travesty really. Oh, um, Stevie. Steve. He deserved it. Steven. Stevithy. Um, Stivothy. Um And then he, he was to be named, uh, before his death, he was to be named an adjunct professor at the University of Queensland um, School of Integrative. Integrative. Uh, or Integrative? Who knows? Um, no, Integrative. I think that sounds right. Integrative. Um, biology. Now, obviously, then he passed away. So, in, in on the 14th of November 2007... Um, Irwin was awarded that professorship posthumously. So oh, that's pretty cool. That was cool. Um, in May 2007, the government of Rwanda... I think you're not meant to pronounce the R too hard, so I'm just kind of sitting back on that one. Um, Radio, mate. <laughs> they announced that they would name a baby gorilla after Irwin as a tribute to his work in wildlife conservation. So little, I'm assuming, I'm assuming little Steve rather than little Irwin. <laughs> um, and then Maybe. in... 2015, Irwin was a posthumous recipient of the Queensland Greats Award, an award I haven't heard of, but sounds great. Queensland great, though. Queensland so not, great. not amazing. Not great, great. No, but Just he is like great. Queensland great. And then on the 22nd of June, 2017, supposedly, as per usual, we're getting our stuff from the most reliable source, which is the internet and specifically Wikipedia. Um, Steve, it was announced that posthumously, again, would be honoured with a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Oh, really? He's got a star on the... Well, that was announced in June. I don't know if it happened. So When was I... this announced? June of what June year? this year. June this oh, year. okay. Yeah. So it possibly wouldn't have happened if it's only been announced Why is it happening so long after he passed? I don't know. I think there's a lot of... It's like 11 years since he died. I think there's a lot of criteria that people have to meet, though, like to get a star on the Walk of... Hall of... Hall of... Walk of... Hall of Fame. Hall, Hall of Walk of Fame. Hall of Walk of... Of Star of Fame. And my yeah. last fact about Stephen Robert Irwin is... Stephen with a PH. Yeah, PH. Um, is the fact that on the 15th of November, it is Steve Irwin Day. It's an annual international event honouring the life and legacy of the one and only crocodile hunter, Steve Irwin. Mr. Steve Irwin. So put that in your diaries, pencil that in, write that down. No, Fifth write it in with permanent marker. Make sure it stains November. the next couple of pages as well. Make Tattoo sure it, it on your skin. Yeah, let's not be silly. Oh, sorry. That's, is that serious, <laughs> Tim? Um, yeah. There you go. That's Steve. That's, that's Steve. That's his life in facts. But I think, uh, you know, Steve, he was kind of a, a talking point in every Australian household. And I'm from what it sounds like, he was sort of a similar figure all around the world. But I remember, mm. yeah, having so many conversations as we grew up about what Steve did with mum and dad because um, the show would be on. And, you yep. know, there was always remarks of, oh, that's crazy and yep. and that sort of stuff. But, yeah, his enthusiasm was incredibly infectious and, and taught us a lot about uh, about Australian wildlife and mm. wildlife around the world as well and, and, you know, doing things in a conservative and preservative way. Um, yeah. he's, he was a big... big uh, proponent of, of conservative tourism and things like that um yeah. and yeah those khaki shorts mate the khaki shorts are really what set it all off i wish i could pull them off like he could um and not I, pull them off no not but, pull them off um you know and uh and uh oh, i was gonna add something and now i've forgotten what it was um but yeah he <laughs> is great uh <laughs> yeah. he was wonderful um, steve you, we your, salute you <laughs> thank you for um, your inspiring words tim what's that do you hear that sound what sound was that? that? Sound? You know what that sound means? What? It's the Harold Holt Watch! Alright, Tim. Mm. Harold Holt Watch. 
It's the Harold Holt Watch. What do we got? Well, we have a letter this week. Yeah. And I'm going to read it to you. Please do. Right now. So, dear Timberly and Leonathan. Uh, yeah. We'll give you a pass on that one. Yeah, yep. that's sure. close. Um, g'day from Bali. Ba- what are you doing in Bali? You're no, about to find no. out. I know what he's doing in Bali. <laughs> you're about, you're going to find out real soon. <laughs> My name is Derek. And I have... Hi, Derek. Um, and I have recently opened up a shop that sells Bintang shirts in Bali. <laughs> All right, good, good on you, Derek. You're going to be doing a good trade, let me yeah. tell you that much. Yeah. <laughs> you're going to be selling a couple of shirts. <laughs> After coming here to surf every two weeks for two years, I realized it was time to stay. And what better job could I ask for? Surfing every day in all the Bintang shirts I could ever need. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, that's enough about me. That is enough about you, Derek. Um, the other night, I was at one of my favorite bar- restaurants, the Barley Belly. Ooh. And I bumped into a bloke on the way to the toilet. Mm-hmm. I caught his eye for just a moment and I could have sworn it was Harold Holt himself. Really? But by the time I had realized, he had already disappeared. Oh. Anyway. Interesting. I just thought you fellas should know. Also, any tips for how to get rid of a nasty thong, the shoes that is, tan. Have a good one, Derek. Thanks for that, Derek. Uh, look, we, we really appreciate that. I'm glad you're over there having, in Bali having a, having a good time. Yep. Say hello to every Australian in the history of the world while they're over there on their holiday. Yep. <laughs> um, hello, look, everyone. Uh, mate, we appreciate you, you writing in. I'm actually going to ask a favour of, of Derek on this one, though. Mm. Maybe um, put up a sign, a free Bintang T-shirt, if if Harold comes in to claim it. Derek, we will Because he'll we definitely will come in. Der- Derek, we'll pay for any free shirts that you have to give out, because hopefully it'll be just one. Yeah, if you've got um, a deal going on, maybe we can get one for Harold and then one for each of us as well. Yeah. Because I don't have one. I've never been to Bali. I'm probably one of the uh, 0.1%... Uh, in Australia that hasn't been. I also haven't been to Bali, therefore do not have a Bintang shirt. If anyone wants to send us a Bintang shirt, it's P.O. Box uh, <laughs> Sounds like a legitimate work. address. But Tim, what about his question? How is oh, he going to get rid of a thong nasty tan. thong tan? Oh, mate. A thong tan is a curse and a blessing, I think. Mm. Um, you can tell a man's wisdom and age by the by the thong tan on his feet. Mm. Um, it's like tree ring dating. It absolutely is. The 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 gradiency is yes. that a word? The gradient, gradient the gradient between uh, that white white under thong, yep, and the leathery leathery <laughs> skin around it. The weathered, <laughs> yeah. Look, mate, I say don't get rid of the thong tan. Mm. Embrace it. This is part of who you are. You're an Aussie bloke living mm. uh, in a sunny sunny island. Mm. I've heard with all the other Aussie blokes, with all of the other Aussie blokes. So uh, no, just. Just embrace it, I think. Um, I, although I think if he does want to get rid of it, the solution is just socks, mate. Just put some socks on with your thongs. No, because then you're going to get a sock tan. Yeah, but a sock tan you can cover with some longer pants. It's a whole scheme. It's a whole situation. It's a whole thing. Derek, put on your rash vest, go for a surf, enjoy some bintang, wear a bintang shirt, and get have a good one, board, mate. mate. Yeah, no, thanks get for writing in. His boogie board. Oh, I thought you said his bully bully, and I was like, well, isn't that someone? <laughs> What's that? <laughs> I don't know. Right. Well, Timothy. there you go. Fabulous. Timberly. Yes. If you will. As Leonathan, is that what he called I think you? Leonathan was what he called me. Um, Tim, as we uh, get to wrap up the show, before we wrap up all the things, you and I mm. have a bit of announcement. An announcement. Yeah, we have uh, two announcements, singular. We're pregnant and we're not pregnant. Those are the two announcements. Yes. No, they're not. Um, so, Tim and I have been hinting at uh, a couple of things lately. We've been talking about stuff in the pipeline uh, for each of us mm. individually. So, Tim and I have been going to all these things lately for this event that I'm about to tell you about. And it's very funny because we rock up together and we regularly have to say, well, we actually, we do something together. We do a podcast together, but we're also, we're sold separately. So, yeah. Um, yeah. And no one believes us. But Tim and I are both doing our own show in... <gasps> The Melbourne Fringe Festival. We certainly are. 2017 Melbourne Fringe Festival. which we Everything actually, is art. Everything is art. For two and a half weeks. Yes. Um, and we uh, we went to the launch party on Thursday we evening. We did, we did, we did. And what a party. I got very drunk. You did. You <laughs> did. It was quite vocal, ladies yeah, and gentlemen. <laughs> quite vocal. Uh, it was funny, though, so that was good. Um, yeah, so we both have shows. You are, of course, doing uh, a stand-up show. Of course, I'm the funniest man alive. Naturally. Um, yes, I am doing talk show with myself. It's uh, it's world premiere, um, and I'll be focusing a little bit on my 
Crohn's disease and the silly things that happened for me. That's playing on the 25th and the 26th of September at Hare Hole, which is Hares and Hyena on Johnson Street in Fitzroy, Victoria, Australia. See you there. Fantastic. Tim, That's bound to be a bloody good laugh, isn't it? Tim is obviously uh, mm, doing a, a singing show about <laughs> one of his favourite people. A singing show is the uh, is the scientific terminology. Um, us laymen call it a cabaret. Mm. Um, yeah, no, I'm doing a, a cabaret. It's about it's called Jim with a T. Bloody. About uh, a hero of mine, Jim Henson, um, who who if you don't know. Should. Tut, tut, tut. Go see He's, the show. Yeah, go see the show and I'll tell you all about him. Um, no, he, he uh, was the creator of The Muppets uh, and hugely influential in the success of Sesame Street. And uh, fun little fact, he helped create Yoda and things like that. So yeah. um, incredibly important in uh, television history, movie history, uh, puppetry history, mm. and my life. Yes. And uh, no, I'm doing a little tr- a tribute show where I talk about his life and I sing the songs of his characters, Rainbow Connection, Being Green, things of that nature. Mm. It's going to be, excuse me, oh, had a burp there. Uh, <laughs> Got so excited. Didn't it's going to be fun. I'm nervous as heck. Come along. We'll post, uh, we'll post details about where it all is. It's obviously in Melbourne. Yeah. Um, where it is, where you can buy tickets. Yep. We'd love to see you. Uh, if we've never met you before, which seems... Possible? Possible. Now's the time. Now's the time. Come to the show. Say good day. Say yeah, good day. Yeah, good day. And we'll yes, say, 10% off. No, wait. That's sorry, why are you saying that to us? Yeah. And then we'll figure it out and yeah. we might have a beer with you. It's um, If anyone's listening from uh, Melbourne Fringe or if anyone's listening that's interested, we both definitely have written our shows completely and they are fully formed pieces that are ready to go. We're a month off. That's fine. We're fine. Send We're fine. Everything's help. fine. Does anyone, <laughs> um, hey, just a quick question to our listeners. Anyone good at writing a comedy show? Anyone yeah. out there? Anyone? <laughs> anyone? 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 Yeah. Look, anyway, that's uh, that's coming up in September. Yes. My show's the 16th to the 23rd of September in North Melbourne at the Metropolitan Hotel. Yes. Yours is the 25th and 26th at Hares and Hyenas, the yep. hair hole, as they call it in the fringe yep. vocab, which and is in Fitzroy. Fitzroy, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, yep, um, yep. But we'll post links to all of that. And that'll be great. This episode has been Steve Irwin. It has been. Uh, you can follow... Yeah, good day at Yeah, good day podcast. Pretty much everywhere. Just go to the website. Yep, www.yeahgoodday.com. Absolutely. Um, please share us. Yep. If you like our stuff. Yep. Share our episodes. There's three new ones out now. Like there's episode one, two, and three. So that's a nice little uh, bundle, a little Absolutely. trilogy. Yeah. Um, make sure you uh, listen to us on whatever you use on your Android or SoundCloud or iTunes and make sure you subscribe to those things. Uh, rate and review us. We haven't had a review in a while. Give us a bit of a review, mate. Give us a bit of yeah. an iTunes review can, or something. And why don't we plug our own personal stuff? I believe on Facebook and Instagram, I am at T for Jim. I think that's and, right. Yeah. Um, I believe on Facebook and Instagram, I am Leon Huxtable Comedy. And I believe on Twitter, I am at Leon Huxtable with capital L and capital H. Yeah. So you can follow our personal exploits and get to know us as individuals. Yeah. Get to know my insides yeah. outside. Um, Ooh, okay. Thanks as always to the wonderful Taylor Smill for making us look so good. Mm, has a man ever been so sexy <laughs> as a cartoon head? No. Probably. Um, yeah, and thanks to Curtis for the intro, outro, duction music, and of course our Harold Holt watch music. And thank you for listening. Hope to see you again next week, but for this week, that's it. So, as always, yeah, g'day, Tim. Yeah, g'day, Leon. Yeah, g'day, everyone. Yeah, g'day, everyone. Catch you on the flippity flop. <laughs>